All right, so I have this friend, and she's one of those girls that she tries really, really hard to be like everybody else, and then she has like she has an attitude like around a lot of people, but she'll change it in front of people that she wants to like impress. And she she has money, so she'll try her best to like copy everybody and like I guess fit in more. So this quote is, she has as much originality as a Xerox machine by Al Peter. So I, what I think that means is that there are some people who like, they have no originality, so they'll try so hard with new people to like impress them and fit in, I guess, with their clothing and like the way they act and what they say. So with their attitudes, like, they'll act a certain way with the people that they have already established their friends with. And like, whenever they meet new people, They'll try to like, I guess, copy things that would probably appeal to the people that they're trying to like make a good impression on. But then again, that's not who they are. They're just doing it to, I guess, get through to them and so that they can like them and like become their friends. But they know that that's not how they are. So in the end, it's not going to work out because the truth always comes out. And with clothing and like appearance, people. I guess they'll try really hard to dress a certain way so that they can fit in, but then like you need to be true to yourself and wear what you want to wear in order to like be original and not copy other people because what are you gonna do when they're gone? Like you're not gonna be who you are, I guess. You're not gonna know who you are either. So with this, I think that there are people who change their ways and their attitude, and they have no originality just because they want to fit in with other people. Yeah, part of the final. All right, Richie, let's talk uh, first about the content of the speech, and then we'll talk about a couple of structure things, and then we'll talk about the presentation. Uh, the content basically sounds kind of repetitive. You're going over the same idea again and again. And part of the problem, I think, is that you don't really have a uh, structure set up for what you're going to talk about. You're kind of coming up with ideas as you're speaking to us, and I think you need to be uh, planning this a little bit more. Impose one of those simple structures on what uh, you're talking about, and I think you'd find even if your examples stay a little bit vague, at least it feels like you're moving forward. As it is, it felt a little bit like you're spinning your wheels, kind of going over the same idea. It wasn't clear to me at one point you came up with clothing and appearance, how that was supposed to be distinct from the other point. I, I guess that it was supposed to be a, a, its its own separate point. There's no preview of what the material is, and that's one of the reasons that it feels like it's not as well organized as it should be. All right, the presentation things. Um, I think you're a little bit subdued in your presentation, although you, you come across 
fairly smoothly. Your pacing is okay. Your voice projects well, but the range in your voice, I think, is a little bit narrow. Uh, you're playing with the topic while you're giving the presentation, you know, not quite wrapping it around your finger, but definitely rolling it up and doing a couple of weird things like that. Try to get that out of your hands. That's one of the places that your anxiety comes out. For the first 30 or 40 seconds of the speech, you're standing there with your arms crossed defiantly like a genie, you know, let's make a wish on you, you know, and you'll blink your eyes and it's going to happen. Uh, that looked a little strange. It looks kind of defensive while you're speaking there. And uh, instead of bringing us into the presentation, you're blocking us off from the presentation there. Uh, your eye contact's inconsistent, and when you watch, I think you're going to notice that you do tend to look up at the ceiling for inspiration. Uh, frequently, and I, th I don't think that helps you. I, look at your audience for the inspiration. I, I see plenty of people out here who are very inspiring. Look at one of them. I'm sure that they'll give you a smile and give you an idea, uh, much more than the counting the holes in the ceiling tiles will do. Um, I didn't notice anything that was particularly problematic, except, like I said, the uh, arms crossed with your body movement. At the end, it did seem like you were trying to circle back, but you'd never gone that far with the topic in the first place, so it doesn't really feel like it's so much a complete circle as maybe you just turned around and looked at it one more time. All right, thank you.